A very good morning to all of you. I, Dr. Tanya Bose, welcome you to the third day of this live online workshop. So in the last two days, we have learned about MATLAB windows, doing simple mathematical calculations using MATLAB, about the assignment operator, about script files, arrays, doing mathematical operations using arrays, and then finally applications of MATLABs in solving linear system of equations. So before I proceed with today's session, let me conduct a small quiz just to test your previous knowledge. So be ready for the quiz. And the first question of the quiz is, Please mark the option which you feel is correct. So I'm closing the first question. So the correct answer was the last option that is four. So around 45% of the participants are given the correct answer. Now, the second question. Mark the correct option. Okay, so the second question is now closing. So I have the correct option is the first option that is two and 79% of the attendees are marking it correct. We move on to the third question. And the third question is mark the correct option. Now I close the third one and the correct option was the editor window that is the second option. 78% of you have marked it correct. Now the fourth question. So now I'm closing the fourth question. And the correct option was the last option, fourth one. And 60% of you have correctly marked it. And there goes the last question for today's quiz.
And here I close this question. The correct option was the last one and 70% of you have correctly answered it. So this shows that you are listening to my sessions very carefully. So thank you so much. So now let's begin with the third session for today. Now today I will be talking about using script files and managing data, then about the plots, both about two dimensional as well as three dimensional plots. So to begin with the first section, how to use script files and how to manage the data. MATLAB workspace and the workspace window. So in my first lecture, I told you about the workspace and the workspace window. So it is basically it consists of a set of variables that are defined and stored during a MATLAB session. And it includes the variables that have been defined in the command window and the variables defined when the script files are executed. So once a variable is in the workspace, it is recognized and can be used and it can be reassigned a new value in both the command window as well as in the script file. So now we will study about two commands. One is who and the second one is whose. So the who command, it displays a list of variables currently in the workspace. And the whose command, it displays a list of variables currently in the workspace and the information about their size, bytes and their class. That means both the commands are doing the same thing. But who command will only display the list of variables and whose command will display the list along with additional information about those variables. So let us see this. Look at the screenshot of the command window. I have written a string variables in memory. And when I press enter after this, I get my answer as variables in memory. So whatever you write within quotation marks, that will be displayed as such. Then I'm defining two variables, a equal to seven, e equal to three, and then I'm assigning a vector like this, d is equal to five comma a plus c comma four comma e raised to power two. And then when I press enter, since there is no semicolon after it, so it will display like this. So the vector is displayed like this. Now when I type the command who and when I press enter, it will be telling me about all the variables that I have been working so far. So what are those variables? One is E, one is A. This string has been stored in answer. So see, you can see answer is displayed here. And then the fourth one is the variable D. So who command will just display the list of the variables. Similarly, when I type whose and I press enter, along with the list of the variables, it is also telling me about the size, the bytes it is consuming, and about the class and the attributes. And then you can also see that the same thing is also being displayed in the workspace window. So whatever variables are there, they have been listed here, and the values that are stored in them are also displayed here, right? So this is about the workspace window. Now, we move on to the variable editor window. Now, suppose if I, this is my workspace. Now, suppose I want to change some value in this variable D. The variable D was a vector having these as the values stored in them. Now, suppose if I want to change my first value, how will I do? I will go to the workspace window. I will go to D and I will double click it. When I double click it, there will be a drop down menu and an Excel sheet containing the variable will be displayed and it will be shown in this way. So I can go to that first cell and by clicking it, it will be highlighted like this and then I can change its value, right? If I don't want to change, I can just check what are the values in that variable. So this is how we can edit the variable window.
Next is how to get the output of the commands. Now, so far when we were discussing the commands in the command window, so if you don't put a comma or a semicolon after the command, it will be displayed along with the name of that command, right? So, far. And, so and if I put a semicolon after any command, it won't be displayed. The output is not shown. So we have an output command as disp disk. What will disk do? It will only display the elements of the variable without displaying the name of the variable. So only the content of that variable will be shown. The name will not be shown with this command. So the format of this command is this name of the variable or this text as a string. So I can write a string in inverted commas. It will be displayed as such, right? So let's look at this example. ABC is equal to 591 semicolon 724 semicolon. So remember, so far, semicolon command, when we place, the display is not shown, right? So now if I give the command DISP ABC and I press enter after this, it will just give me the content of ABC. It will not show that ABC is equal to this matrix, right? So if I don't put a semicolon here, when I press enter, it will be shown as ABC equal to and in the next line, the matrix will be shown. So this command will only show the content of the, of the matrix. It will not show its name, right? Mm -hmm. And in the second example, you can see that I'm writing this. Welcome you all to the beautiful morning within inverted commas. So the string will be the message will be shown as it is, right? So this is how we work with this command. The next one is how do we use this? This was in the command window, the previous one. Now how to use it in script files. Now this is an example of a script file which calculates the average points scored in the three games. So how to get the output? I'm writing that game one is equal to, I want to get the input of the scores that you attain in the three games. So I'm asking it that game one is equal to input and please enter the points scored in the first game, colon, inverted commas, brackets close and semicolon. Similarly, input the, enter the points scored in the second game and the third game. Then I'm calculating average points as average underscore points is sum of all the three games, then the sum divided by three. Then I want to display this message that the average points, average of the points scored in a game is, I want to display the message as such. And then I'm giving the command, this average underscore points. So it will not give me this, uh, it will not be shown as average point is equal to this. In place of average point, it will only give the value of the average points, right? So let's see its output. So when I execute this command, in the command window, this is shown. Average point was the name of the script file. So when I execute it, it will be shown here. Then the first line is executed. The first line says input, enter the points code in the first game. So this message is displayed. So enter the points code in the first game. It will put a colon after it. And then I will enter, suppose I've entered 80. Then I'll press enter. The second line is executed. It will ask me enter the points code in the second game. So then I enter 90, I press enter. Then it will ask me enter the points code in the third game. So I'll again write 95. And now when I press enter, it will go to the third, fourth line. It will calculate average points equal to game one plus game two plus game three divided by three. But there is a semicolon, so the output is not shown. It will move on to the next line. Display the average of points scored in a game is. So you can see that the next line is shown here, right? And then it will execute the next line, then average points. So whatever value it has calculated after calculating the sum and dividing by three, the answer is shown here, right? So this is how the disk command works in a script file, right? Okay. Next is the fprintf command. This is also to display the output, but in addition to the display, you can also save it to a file and the output can also be formatted, right? 
let's look at the format. The format is same as this command. Suppose if I want to write a message, I, I will put them in quotation marks and I will write S print as along with it. So you can just check this. Suppose in a script file I write S print F and then in the brackets I'm writing in quotation marks. Welcome to today's webinar on MATLAB. When I execute the script file, this is the message that I will get in my command window, right? Likewise, suppose I type this message in the script file, f printf, welcome to today's webinar on MATLAB, x is equal to 6, semicolon, d is equal to 19 plus 5 into x, semicolon, f printf, Try to run the program later, then y is equal to d plus x semicolon, then f printf, use different input values. Now how will the script file execute? It will go to the first line. It is telling him to print this line. So what it will do? It will print the line, welcome to today's webinar on MATLAB. Then it will go to the next line. It is telling him x is equal to 6 semicolon, d is equal to this expression semicolon. So whenever there is a semicolon, that message is not displayed. Then it will move to the next line. F print f, try to run the program later. So it will type the message, try to run the program later. Then it will move on to the next line. Y is equal to d plus x. There is a semicolon again after it. So it will not display this message. Then it will move to the last line. It is asking him to print use different input values. So it will write use different input values, right? Now you might have a question in your mind that why are these lines coming together? Because I'm not telling him to print the answers in the next lines. So to get the every statement on the next line, I have to put slash n, backslash n at the beginning of every statement, right? So when I write here backslash n, and when I write here backslash n, these two lines will be shifted to the second and the third line. Otherwise, they will come in a continuation, right? So this is how it is used in a script file. Okay. Next is, so far we have seen how to display a string with the commands fprintf. Now suppose if I want to display a mix of text as well as numerical data. So I want a string also there and I want the value of a data also. Then how to print it? Then the command uses the format is f printf in inverted commas. Suppose this is the message I want to write text as string. So you can write any message here, anything you can write here. Then percentage minus 5.2 f comma variable name. Now what are the meaning of these things? Text as string will be displayed as such. Percentage means it marks the spot where the number is inserted within the text. So at this particular place, the value will be written, right? Then we have minus 5.2 f. These are the formatting elements. They are defined to format the number. We will do this in detail in the next slide. And this is the name of the variable whose value is to be displayed, right? So let's go to this detail in the next slide. What is first uh, minus 5.2 f? Now minus 5.2 f, there are three things. One is the minus sign, then it is 5.2 and then it is f. So instead of 5.2, it can be any number. This is just an example, right? Now, what is the meaning of this minus? It is a flag. Now, what are the characters used for this flag? It can be a minus sign, like it is here. It means that it left justifies the number within the field. If there is a plus sign, it means it prints the sign character in front of the number. And if I write zero, it adds a zero if the number is shorter than the field. Then we have 5.2, it means it is the field width and the precision. And then we have f, f is the conversion character. What all conversion characters can we have? Since it is f, 
the meaning of f is six point notation so the numbers of this form they have to be written as f so if i want my answer as an integer i will write i if i want my answer to be displayed like this i will write e and if i want to write the answer to be written like this with a capital e notation i have to write capital e right so just to recall it again so this is how we are going to write f print f when we want to display a mix of text as well as numerical data right okay next is we move on to the second section that is two dimensional plot now what is the two dimensional plot so you can see if you remember my first lecture i told you that there are four basic windows when you open a text uh, matlab on the desktop in addition to that we have a very editor window that is used for writing script files there is a figure window also so this is what i'm going to talk about the figure window so you can see that this is a graph which plots intensity versus distance so it is light intensity intensity as a function of distance so what are all the requirements to plot this diagram so you can see that it has the plot title it has a legend there is a comparison between the theoretical values and the experimental values then there is a x axis label and there is a y axis label and you can see that in the lines some markers are used to mark to just distinguish between the two different lines the colors can also be changed or you are using different markers right so these are the essential things to plot a figure now how to plot it so the command used is plot so the plot command it creates a two dimensional plot so the simplest form of the command is plot x comma y so here it will give you a plot of y versus x right now look at this command window i have defined the two vectors x is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 and correspondingly the values of y are the square root of these numbers right now if i plot x comma y so it will be the simplest i'll just run the simplest command plot x comma y so in the figure window this pop up will come and it will give you a graph of x y versus x right and by default the line will always be blue so this is the default line color so if you don't mention any color it will by default it will always show you a blue line right okay now so simplest command was plot x comma y but then you can beautify your figure so you can use additional op optional arguments also now what are those additional arguments so along with plot x comma y you can give the name line specifiers property name and property value now what are all these x and y are the vectors then property name it specifies that uh, the type and color of the line and the marker so if it, you are using any marker or if you want to color a particular line apart from blue you can use the property name and then property value is the properties with values that can be used to specify the line width you can change the width of the line the size of the marker the edges of the marker and you can also fill them the um, markers edges can be filled with a different color and it can be filled with a different color right now what are all these line specifiers property name and property value the different line style specifiers are this is a solid line so by default always this is used if you don't mention anything if you want a dashed line so this is a dashed line then a dotted line is depicted like this and a dash dot line is depicted like this right so solid line 
you can see this is the solid line dashed line dotted line and dot line so these are the four line styles right okay then we have the line color specifiers what all colors you can use so these are the different line colors r is used for red g is used for green b is used for blue c is used for cyan m is used for magenta y is used for yellow k is used for black and w is used for white so only the color black is being used uh, has been highlighted with k rest of all the colors this first names has been used right okay and then the marker type specifiers are so you can just go through this table plus sign circle asterisk point cross triangles square diamond star symbols five pointed six pointed and then triangle left pointed and right pointed so these are the different marker style specifiers you can use for the plotting of your diagrams right okay now let's take an example of the plot specifiers so if i write plot x comma y a blue solid line connects the points with no markers so this is by default so i showed you it in the first example plot x comma y and then i'm writing in inverted commas r so instead of the blue color a red solid line will be displayed connecting the points x and y if i write plot x comma y and in inverted commas if i write dash dash y so i will get a dashed line connecting the points and the color of that dashed line will be y y means yellow then if i write plot x comma y and in inverted commas if i write star there will be no line connecting the points but instead of line there will be markers with the asterisk symbol right then if i write plot x comma y in inverted commas if i write g colon d this means a green dotted line will be shown and the lines will be connected with the help of a dotted line the colon symbol signifies the dotted line and then d is the marker specifier so d was used for diamond markers and if i just go back to the previous slide you can see that d was used for diamond markers right and g was used for the line color and if i still go back to the last slide you can see that colon was used for a dotted line right so g colon d this will give me a green dotted line connecting the points that are marked with diamond markers clear okay now let's talk about the property names and the property values now these are optional arguments it's not necessary that you have to give it's your choice now properties are optional and can be used to specify the thickness of the line the size of the marker color of the markers edge line and the filling so these are the different property names you can use line width it specifies the width of the line marker size it specifies the size of the marker marker edge color the edge of the marker you can uh, specify any color mm -hmm. marker face color you can fill that marker with any defined color that i have told you in the last day right so these are the different property names that you can use as a optional argument in property name and property value so let's do an example look at this command it has so many optional arguments so it is plot x comma y in inverted commas there is the dash then it is m written here 
then there is a circle symbol then i am writing line width then 2 marker size 12 marker edge color g marker face color y so when i execute this command what will it tell me it will tell me that it is a plot of y versus x with this dash depicts the solid line m depicts magenta color and o the circle means that there should be markers in that line marked as circles so it will be a magenta solid line along with circles as the marker then further it is written line width 2 so the line the magenta solid line the width of that line will be 2 in size and then marker size 12 so the circle markers their size will be 12 points the marker edge color the edge of the circle will be marked as green and the face color it will be filled with yellow line yellow color right so this is the meaning of the optional argument so this is your choice you can give also or you can you can avoid also right but it is used when you are uh, making two three plots in the same graph otherwise if you use if you don't mention anything all the plots will be done with blue line so you will not be able to distinguish them later on so it is advised to give different colors or to assign different markers to different lines right okay so if we move on to the next one plot of a given data so let's take an example this is the sales data of a company from 2010 to 2016 and i want to see a plot of this sales versus year so if you remember the last few slides the last lectures i can define this year vector as 2010 colon 1 colon 2016 so you can see that 2010 to 2016 the spacing between the year is one year so if you remember this command this was the first term last term and this was the spacing right so year equal to this will yield this data and then the sale is 8 12 20 22 18 24 24 and 27 i want to make a plot of year comma sale so i have to write the x axis first and then the y axis then i am writing these are all the optional arguments i am writing inverted commas dash dash r star line width 2 marker size 12 so dash dash r means it is the line specifier red line right then i need a dashed line then line width and marker size these are the property name and the property value so when i take a plot in the figure editor window i will see that there is a dashed line it will be red in color then the markers stars will be used in this asterisk sign is used the width of this line is 2 points and the size of the marker is 12 points right okay next plot of a function now we have seen how to plot our data points now if a function is given in this form y is equal to 3.5 to the power minus 0.5x into cos 6x and the interval is x lies between minus 2 and 4 how to plot this so in the command window suppose i am writing x as i am specifying the first term as minus 2 the last term as 4 and i want to give a spacing of 0.01 so the more spacing i give the better plot i will obtain right so y is i am writing this function 3.5 now since i want element to element multiplication so i am writing dot exponential right if i simply use exponential symbol instead of dot exponential it will give me an error so since i want to multiply element by element so i am writing dot exponential then minus 0.5 into x then dot multiplication cos 6 into x 
Even if I write 6x, it will give me an error. 6x, it has no meaning. So I have to write 6 into x, right? Then I press the semicolon. Then I write plot x comma y. So it will create a vector x with the domain of this function. And then it will create a vector y with the function values at each x. And then it will plot y as a function of x. So you can see that the graph of the function will look like this. Right. So it is quite simple. Okay. Next. So, so far we were studying how to plot a single graph in the same figure window. Now, if I want to plot multiple graphs in the same plot, then how to do it? Now, the command used is plot x comma y comma u comma b comma t comma h. So what does it mean? It means that it will plot three graphs. One is y versus x. Second one is b versus u. And the third one is h versus t. All these plots will be done in the same one. Right? Let's see how to do that. This is the question. You have to plot the function y equal to 3x cube minus 26x plus 10 along with its first and the second derivatives in the interval minus 2 less than equal to x less than equal to 4. Now how to plot them? Let's see. So first of all, I create my vector x. Again, I'm giving the same spacing 0 0.01. Then I'm writing the function y. y is 3 into x dot exponential power 3 minus 26 into x plus Sorry, there is a mistake. Instead of this 10, I have written here 6. So, no, never mind. We'll change this to 6 plus 6. Then a semicolon. Then I'm writing the first derivative with the symbol yd equal to what is the first derivative? 3x cube, it will be 9x squared. So, it is 9 into x dot exponential squared minus 26x derivative would be 26, right? And then the second derivative, the symbol used is y dd. This is equal to, so this first derivative was 9x squared. 9x squared derivative will be 18 into x. And then 26, it's a constant term, so derivative will become 0. So we have three functions y, yd and y dd. Now, I'm giving the plot command x comma y. So I want to first plot x and y. And I want, since I told you that if I don't give any additional argument, all the free graphs will be marked with a blue line only. So I want to distinguish them. So I'm writing the first plot, x comma y, should have a solid line. And the color of the line is blue. So I'm writing it as inverted commas dash blue, b. Then I'm writing the plot of x and y, d. So I'm writing x comma y, d. And in inverted commas, I'm writing a dashed line. So this is a double dash I'm writing. And then I'm writing that the color of the line should be red, R. Then I want the plot of x and y, d, d. So I'm writing x comma y, d, d. And then I want that the it should be a dotted line. And the color, if you remember, k signifies black color. So when I give the uh, press enter, you can see that all the three plots are in the same line. So this is the plot of y versus x, the blue line. The red line is the plot of y d versus x. That means the first derivative with x. And this dotted black line, this is the plot of the second derivative with x. So I hope it is clear. Okay. Now there is another technique of writing to make all the plots on the same graph. What is that? With the help of hold on and hold off commands, also you can make the plots on the same graph. Now look at this. X is equal to, I'm writing the same functions. X is this, Y, Y, D, and Y, D, D. So when I write plot x comma y comma dash b, it will plot 
first of all y versus x so it creates the first graph y versus x then i'm writing hold on and then i'm writing plot x comma y d and plot x comma y d d with these marker lines uh, line specifiers and then on this first graph two more graphs will be created like this right and then i have written hold off so after this i don't want any more graphs to be created on the same one so with the hold on and hold off command we can do the same thing right so we can write all the variables together or we can use this option right okay now plots with special graphics let's go through this we can make vertical bar plot with the help of the function bar x comma y so you can see here i'm writing yr is equal to this sales i'm taking the same thing same function and i'm writing bar yr dot sle sorry yr comma sle comma in inverted commas r okay let me first ask you one simple question let me go let me take a short quiz and let me see are you all attentive or not and the question is quickly mark it and let me know the answer So I close the question. So the answer was the first option, that is one, and around eighty percent of you have correctly answered it. Right, good. So you are attending properly. Now, so by default, when I am not writing here anything, the spacing is taken as one. So now let me explain what happened here. Bar y r comma s s l e. It will create a bar graph, and since I am writing r. so the bar graphs have been marked with a red bars right if i don't mention this r the bars will be painted as blue by default right then you can see that in the command i am writing x label and in brackets i have written what is my x label it has to be year so it is a string so i have written it in inverted commas so when i press enter here year will be displayed and then the y label should be sales in millions i'm writing this in a inverted commas so you can see that sales in millions are written on the y axis so this is how the bar function is used right likewise we can have horizontal bar plot the same example but the function format for horizontal is bar h so instead of bar now i am using the function bar h so how will the plot appear so this is your plot so you can see that i have not mentioned any color here so the color is blue by default right okay now we have stairs plot with the same function if i use stairs instead of bar i will get a plot like this you can see there are stairs formed in this then the stem plot the format is stem so instead of stairs if i now write stem i will get my plot as like this so these are the special graphics which we can also use okay now there is one more special graphic that is a pie chart now suppose these are the grades a b c d e and these are the number of students getting these grades suppose i want to draw a pie chart so my function format is pi x comma y now what is x comma y i will write here the grade 
GRD, these are the grades. So I will write 11, 18, 26, 9, 5. Then I will write 5 GRD. And when I write, give the uh, function as title class grades, the caption of this function of this plot will be class grades, right? So this will how the plot look like. So all these number of students will be converted in percentages and the pie graph will be created, right? And you can see that the title class grades is also being shown here, right? So this is a pie plot. Okay. Next is, so, so far we were discussing about Cartesian coordinate plots. Now let's see how to plot a polar graph. Now, the format is polar, right theta, comma, the value of the radius. This is the essential thing. And then you can obviously mark the line specifiers according to your choice. So, let us take an example. Plot the function r equal to 3 cos squared, 0 0.5 theta plus theta. And the interval of theta is from 0 to 2 pi. So let us see how to plot this. So I'm writing t is equal to, so instead of theta, I'm using the symbol t. t is equal to, remember lin space command, lin space was first term, last term, and number of terms. So the more number of terms I can mark here, the better figure I will obtain, right? So I'm writing 0 to 2 pi, the first term is 0, the last term is 2 pi, so I'm writing 0 comma 2 into pi, this is how we write pi, and then I'm writing 200, so I want 200 points numbers in between them, so it will be equally line, linearly spaced between 0 to 2 pi. Then I'm writing the value of the radius r, r is 3 into cos 0 0.5 into t dot exponential, it is raised to power 2, so I'm dot exponential 2, plus theta, so it is plus t. Then I give the command polar t comma r. When I press enter, the figure window will pop out and this is the result of the polar graph. So this is how we use the polar command, right? Okay. Now we move on to the last section of my today's talk that is three dimensional plot. It is similar to two dimensional plot, just the command name will change. Rest all the line specifiers, property name, property values, they will remain as it is, right? So there is not a major difference in three dimensional plot. So let's see. Line plots. A three dimensional line plot is a line that is obtained by connecting the points in a three dimensional space. So the command used is, in two-dimensional plot, the command was plot, simple plot. Now we are using plot three, because there are three dimensions involved. So there I was writing only x comma y, now I have to write x comma y comma z. Then the line specifiers, then the property name and the property value. So x, y, z are the vectors of the coordinate points. These are the optional parameters, line specifiers and property name and property value. They are same as we did it in two-dimensional plots, right? Okay. Let's take an example of a 3D plot. Suppose you want to plot x equal to root t sine 2t, y is equal to root t cos 2t, z is equal to 0.5t. So I'm writing t is equal to 0 colon 0 0.1 colon 6 into 5. So I should have written here that t lies between 0 to 6 pi. So I am taking the spacing between the first and the last term as 0 0.1. Then I am writing x is equal to square root t dot multiplication sine 2 into t. So whenever we make plots and whenever we are mentioning the functions, we also always have to do it element to element. So wherever we are multiplying or wherever we are putting an exponential symbol, we have to write dot multiply or dot exponential. Then y is equal to square root t dot multiplication cos 2 into t. Z is equal to 0 0.5 into t. 
then i am using the command plot 3 x comma y comma z comma k line width comma 1 okay a quick question now let's go to the question and the question is quickly mark them okay now i close the question so 73% of you are marking black and black is the correct one i told you that only the black color is depicted with k rest all are with the first name the first letter of their names right so some of you are sleeping in between i think you are not listening to me okay so now when i press enter here what will i get i will get the plot in three dimension right now what is the meaning of grid on can you see very fine lines in these plot so this is the meaning of grid on if i write here grid off these lines will not be there only a white portion of the page will be shown right so this is the meaning of grid on and grid off and then i'm writing x label x y label y and z label z so you can see that this is my x axis being labeled as x y axis being labeled as y and z axis being labeled as z so if i write here grid off these fine lines will also vanish only the white portion of the page is displayed here right so this is how we get a three dimensional plot okay next is mesh and surface plots now what is the technique of creating a plot in 3d we create a grid in an xy plane that covers the domain of the function then we calculate the value of z at each point of the grid and the third step is to create the plot so the basic three steps is first step to create the grid second step is to create to calculate the values of z at each point of the grid values and then the third step is to create the plot so keep these in mind now we move on to the next slides to check all these steps now let's plot this graph z is equal to x into y square divided by x square plus y square the domain of x is minus 1 to 3 and the domain of y is from 1 to 4 so my first step is to create a grid right so grid means a coordinate plane with the values of x and y so how will i create the grid the command used is mesh grid so x and y capital x and capital y they are the matrix of capital x is the matrix of x coordinate of grid points capital y is the matrix of the y coordinate of grid points and x and y they are the vector which denotes the domain of x and y is the vector which denotes the domain of y now in the command window i have to write what is x x lies between minus 1 to 3 minus 1 colon 3 so automatically by default the spacing is 1 y is equal to 1 colon 4 so here also automatically the spacing is 1 then i give this command x comma y is equal to mesh grid small x comma y when i press enter here the matrix x will tell me the grid points of the x coordinate and the matrix y will tell me the grid points of the y coordinate now what is the meaning of this mesh grid now what do you mean by x and y look at this graph let me take the first points minus 1 1 so this is my first grid value right then 0 1 so this is my second grid value then 
one. So this is my third grid value. Then two, one. So this is my next grid value. Three, one, that is my next one. Now we will move on to the second rows of both X and Y. Minus one, two, zero, two. So all these grid points are shown here. Likewise, when we move on to the third rows of X and Y, we will get these as the grid values. And when we move on to the fourth row, we will get these as the grid values. So this is my first step to create a mesh grid of X comma Y, right? Next, we move on to the second one. Second is, we have to calculate the values of Z at each of these grid points. So I write, what is my Z? Z was XY square divided by X square plus Y square. So how am I writing it? X dot into Y dot raised to power 2. So X into Y square divided by so see, all the operations carry a dot symbol, right? So they have to be done element to element. So x dot raised to power 2 plus y dot raised to power 2. So all those grid values, the value of z will be calculated once I press it. So you can see that you get this as the values of z, right? Now we go to the third step. Third step is to create the plot of x comma y. Now, you can use both the commands mesh and surf. What is the difference between mesh and surf? If you use a mesh plot, you will get lines that connect the points. And if you write surface plot, that is surf, you will get areas within the mesh lines colored. So this is the difference. The plot will be same. In the mesh, you will get only simple lines. Here you will get the areas within the mesh lines as covered. Right? Okay, let's see an example. So the same thing, I'm writing x is equal to the domain minus 1, 3. y is 1, 2, 4. I got the mesh grid by this command. Then I wrote z is equal to this. Now I want to plot x, y, z. So first I'm using the command mesh x, comma y, comma z. So I write mesh x comma y comma z. Then I want to label x axis with x, y axis as y and z axis as z. Now when I press enter, I will get a mesh plot. So you can see that there are lines which connect all these points. Right? Now in place of mesh, if I write surf, I will get a surface plot. So you can see that the areas within the surface mesh lines they have been colored so it is the same one here the lines were marked now the areas between the mesh lines are colored so this is the difference between mesh plot and the surface plot right so for a 3d plot you can either use plot 3 command or you can use mesh plot and surface plot right Okay, so with this, I end my session. So your queries, it can be addressed to tanya.pose.chitkara.edu.in. Till then, take care. See you tomorrow at the same time. Stay at home and stay safe. Bye.